Welcome to a quick and dirty overview of the ANS. In this short presentation, I'd like to talk about the anatomy of the autonomic nervous system and specifically the anatomy of the motor fibers that are traveling from the central nervous system out to the effectors. The learning objectives, the things that I'd like to have you take away from this short presentation, essentially focus on the differences between the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system, and then comparing and contrasting the sites of origin where the cell bodies are located, the locations of the ganglia, and generally the pathways that are taken in the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions. All right. This is an image that we looked at when we began our discussion of the nervous system earlier in the semester. Up here at the top, this is a depiction, um, a flowchart essentially, of information flow in the somatic uh, nervous system. And you can see that the effector in the somatic nervous system is going to be skeletal muscle. So we've got the sensory division, which sends information into the central nervous system. We've got the motor division which sends information from the CNS out to that effector there. And you can see kind of how they're related. Now, right below it, we've got the autonomic nervous system. And the main di uh, difference between the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system has to do with the effector. So here we see that the effector in the autonomic nervous system is going to be anything related to an organ or a gland. Smooth muscle that's found in the walls of most hollow organs cardiac muscle, which of course forms the wall of the heart, and then glands that are also um, targets, salivary glands, glands, and the digestive system is an example, that are also doing uh, work in the body and contributing to the overall functions of the different organ systems. Okay. Now this is a slightly different picture, but I think it's instructive because this image, this chart, is showing you the structure of the motor pathways within each division. So again, up at the top we've got the somatic nervous system here. And what you're looking at is the pathway that information is taking from the central nervous system right here out to the effector. And the effector is going to be all the way over here at the right. And because this is the somatic nervous system, in fact, our effector is going to be skeletal muscle here. In the somatic nervous system, you see we've got cell bodies that are going to be located in the spinal cord in the central nervous system. And these uh, cell bodies, these cells, these neurons, are going to have long axons that travel all the way out to the effector. And to communicate with the effector, they're going to be releasing a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. This is the somatic nervous system. Now below this here, we've actually got three lines or three different pictures of the autonomic nervous system two that are related to the sympathetic division and one that's related to the parasympathetic division. So let's step through the sympathetic division first. Here again you see we have neurons that have cell bodies in the central nervous system and the brain and spinal cord and specifically these cell bodies are going to be located in the spinal cord but instead of sending an axon directly to the effector and in our case here the effectors are shown over here on the far right we see that the axon travels to a ganglion, and you might remember that we've uh, mentioned this before, but a ganglion is a collection of cell bodies. At this ganglia, this fiber, this neuron, is going to make a synapse with a second neuron, and the second neuron then sends an axon out to the effector where it communicates with this effector, and it uses norepinephrine as the neurotransmitter here. So in the sympathetic division, then, it looks like we've got a two-neuron chain that sends information to the effectors. With our first neuron here having a cell body in the central nervous system, it sends, um, it sends an axon to a ganglion. And the second neuron in the chain has a cell body in the ganglia, and it sends an axon to the um, effector. Now let's skip down here. We're going to look at the parasympathetic division, and we see a very similar arrangement here. So once again, we've got a cell body in the central nervous system, and we this cell body, this neuron, will send an axon to a ganglia, where we form a synapse with a second neuron. This second neuron then sends an axon to the effector, and it uses acetylcholine there, which is a little, which is different than the sympathetic division, but it's the same as the somatic nervous system.
So right away you should be able to see that the autonomic nervous system uses consistently a two neuron chain to convey information to the effectors here, a two neuron chain. And these neurons then form synapses and these structures, these collections of cell bodies that are called ganglia. All right, so let's see um, if we can kind of compare these. I'm gonna change the slide here. Now this particular image here, let me orient you. We're showing the central nervous system here in the center. We've got the brain and the spinal cord. And on the right hand side, this author is showing you kind of a depiction of the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system and on the left hand side she's showing you a depiction of the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. I do want to be clear in actual life we don't see that the sympathetic division is only on the right side of the body or only if we were to be technically correct this looks like it's all posterior um, and the parasympathetic would be only on the left hand side of the body or technically anterior here we see that both divisions are going to go everywhere in the body this author is showing it in this way simply so that she can show both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions side by side so that you can make a comparison Right away, you can see that the effectors are, to, are um, outlined here. So we've got, you know, eye, skin, salivary glands. We've got a number of organs that are here, bladder and genitals. These are all going to be targets for the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. In the parasympathetic division, we see that the parasympathetic uh, division sends information to many of the same effectors. So we see then that many effectors are going to receive innervation from both the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. This will become important as we talk about the overall functions of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic division. Now on the previous slide we said that um, one difference between the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system was the fact that we had two neurons in a chain. If we start here with the sympathetic division we can see that our initial cell bodies are going to be located here in the spinal cord and the ganglia are going to be located in several places. The first place where we can have a ganglia is something called the um, sympathetic ganglia here or the chain ganglia and they get their name because they're they make a chain. It looks very much like beads on a string or like a necklace here and these are actually ganglia where we can form a synapse. The second place where we can have a ganglia or something called collateral ganglia and they're going to be outside of the chain ganglia outside of the chain ganglia. In the parasympathetic division you can see that we've got uh, motor neurons that have cell bodies in the brain and in the spinal cord down here. They send out axons to the effectors and we see that in this case the ganglia are located usually pretty close to the effectors and sometimes these ganglia are actually located in the walls of the effector organs. So on the sympathetic division side, we see that the preganglionic fibers then would be short and these postganglionic fibers would be rather long. Whereas in contrast, in the parasympathetic division, we would see that we would have long preganglionic fibers and very short postganglionic fibers. And that's one significant difference between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic division is the difference in the size or the length of the pre and postganglionic fibers. All right. Now if we focus on the sympathetic side first here, initially we said that we've got cell bodies, motor cell bodies that are going to be located in the dorsal horns of the spinal cord and the spinal cord regions um, where we find cell bodies here are going to be from T1 from the thoracic region 1 all the way to L2. These are the regions of the spinal cord. And so for this reason, sometimes you'll see the sympathetic division called the thoracolumbar outflow because this is where the cell bodies, the motor cell bodies are located. Okay. Uh, the postganglionic fibers, as we said before, can have cell bodies that are located in the sympathetic chain ganglia, in the collateral ganglia, and then also in the adrenal medulla and the adrenal medulla is actually or the adrenal gland we believe is kind of a modified special case of a ganglion 
So this already looks kind of complicated. Um, so you should be able to see that we can put these together in a couple of different ways in order to have you know, pathways from the spinal cord out to the effectors. Let's see if we can break this down a little bit more. So in this image, what I've done is I've just blown up the, the picture from the previous slide, and I've included this dotted line here. This actually is going to represent our diaphragm. So we're going to be focusing on what's happening above the diaphragm and what's happening below the diaphragm. Here are our cell bodies located in the um, thoracolumbar region of the spinal cord. All preganglionic fibers in the sympathetic division have got cell bodies in the thoracolumbar region of the spinal cord. Okay. Above the diaphragm, what we see is that the postganglionic fibers are going to have cell bodies that are located in the sympathetic chain ganglia or in the sympathetic trunk. Below the diaphragm, we see that the postganglionic fibers are going to have cell bodies that are found in these uh, collateral ganglia. And the collateral ganglia, as we said before, are different than the chain ganglia. They're actually located outside or peripheral to the uh, chain ganglia. All right. Now, above the diaphragm, then, what we see is when we have uh, when we have targets that are going to be above the diaphragm. So this is going to be anything in the head, in the neck, in the limbs. Um, we see then that the preganglionic fibers will have their origins here um, in the thoracolumbar region of the spinal cord. They form a synapse here in the chain ganglia, and then there are several ways that they that these postganglionic fibers can get to that target. The first way is that they can travel there by a spinal nerve. And this postganglionic fiber can enter a spinal nerve via this structure called a gray rami communicanti or a gray ramus communicanti um, in the singular. It's called it's a gray because it's not myelinated. The second way that we can have um, uh, pathways, especially to the head and the face, are through structures that are called uh, cephalic periarterial nerves. And these are going to be nerves that specifically travel to the face. The third way that we can have uh, targets innervated in the sympathetic division, targets above the, the diaphragm, is by the formation of specific sympathetic nerve bundles. And we're going to see this typically with the lungs and the heart. So these targets are going to be in the thoracic cavity. All right. Now below the, the diaphragm, what we see is that the postganglionic fibers, as we've said, they get their origin in the collateral ganglia. If we were to follow this from the cell bodies that are here, we would see that anything that's traveling to a collateral ganglia, actually any of these preganglionic fibers, they travel through the chain ganglia without forming a synapse, and then they form and then travel to the collateral ganglia where they form um, a synapse there. And so the postganglionic fiber then has its cell body in these collateral ganglia. We have a special name for the nerves that are formed, these tracts that are formed that pass through the chain ganglia and go to the collateral ganglia. We call those splanchnic nerves. Splanchnic nerves. Okay. Now, mercifully, on the parasympathetic side of the equation, we see a different distribution and we see a much simpler uh, set of pathways to get to the target organs. So on the parasympathetic side, we see that the cell bodies are going to be located in the brain stem here. And in fact, several are actually going to be cranial nerves and in the sacral region of the spinal cord. So for this reason, the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system is sometimes referred to as craniosacral outflow, craniosacral outflow. The preganglionic fibers, as we've said, these are going to be those axons that uh, travel to a ganglia. These are going to be very long, and they travel practically to the effector before they form a synapse. So the ganglia are going to be located very close to or even in the walls of the effectors. This means that the preganglionic fibers are long and the postganglionic fibers are very short. Now to get a sort of a different appreciation here, you can see we've got several here. We've got our preganglionic cell bodies here formed in the brain and then below in the spinal cord. And then the postganglionic fibers you can see are going to be located very close 
to the target organs. So this gives us kind of a very quick overview of some different structures, the different structural organization of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic um, division of the autonomic nervous system. From here, we're going to talk about the neurotransmitters um, and the receptors that are present in both.